Alright y'all, let's get into the versus battle between Brandy and Monica. Y'all ready? It's lit. I came to vibe, you came to function, just do that baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, 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 no. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Bright here, the RB Kid, and I'm back again uh, with another versus review for y'all. I know it's been a while, y'all. I, I know this video is hella late. I'm sorry, y'all, but there's been a lot going on in my life. I started back up with school uh, last week, so I, you know, I've been getting back into school. This is my last year at BU trying to get my MPH, so thank God we almost done one more year. I'm done with my with my master's program. And there's a lot of stuff going on in my personal life, so I kind of took a break from YouTube for a little bit, but I'm back. Uh, so I'm sorry this video is hella late, y'all, but better late than never. Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, I want to talk about the Brandy and Monica versus battle that went down last uh, last week. Um, and listen, y'all, as an R&B fanatic, this was this moment was so was such a blessing for me. I was just so happy to see two of my favorite R&B artists really get uh, their flowers while they're still alive and here to see it. Um, the love that they got during the during the battle and just the love that they've been, they've been seeing ever since has warmed my spirits, warmed my heart. Y'all know I'm an R&B lover. I'm an R&B fanatic to the day I die. So this moment was so special for me, especially as someone who's obsessed with both artists, especially Brandy. I'm so happy for the love that they both got during this versus battle. And I'm just so happy for what this moment meant for R&B and also for both of these women who I feel like um, have been low-key like two of the most consistent artists of their generation and the fact that to see that they're still relevant now and to see that they had the most like you know record-breaking versus battle to date is just so like so so special to me I love it man one at the height of the battle I think they had 1.2 million viewers on IG I was watching Apple music um Cause to me that's a better way to watch it but on IG they had like 1.2 million viewers and it kind of stayed that way the whole time which I thought was amazing um and they, they, I know they had like many more millions of, of viewers like on Apple Music and other platforms too but I was just like wow I think they had like 6 million viewers all together something like that and I was just like wow I mean obviously a lot of people tuned in to kind of see like you know if it, will be, if it will be messy and all that but to me um even even if that was the case, I'm just, I'm so glad that they got all the attention that they got because uh, both of the catalogs to me are insane. They both have two of the uh, most consistent um, catalogs in R&B, so I'm happy that they both got this time to shine and both got this time to like really remind the world how good both of their catalogs are, like on some real shit. Um, and for this moment, I you know I definitely had to wear my R&B shirt for this moment. Uh, shout out to Kev on stage. Um, I bought this R&B shirt from him years ago, like probably like last year, the year before, and um. Brandy and Monica are right here if you can see that. Yeah, man. Shout out to Brandy and Monica. They're definitely a part of the imprint of, you know, you know, contemporary R&B. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to wear this shirt for the occasion for y'all. Uh, but yeah, man. So let's get into the battle. Um, give y'all some of my overall thoughts. Um, I was really excited for this versus. I've already been told y'all I wanted this versus to happen for a long time because obviously they're perfect for each other because they both came out at the same time. And to me, obviously, Brandy and Monica are perfect because not only because of the drama behind both of their, you know, careers with the boys' mind and all that, but also because, like, when you look at it, Brandy and Monica literally have the same amount of, like, actual hits on Billboard. Like, they both have about the same amount of albums that they put out in the, in the span of their careers. Um, they really have been always, like, neck and neck in terms of, like, the quality of, like, um, you know, the hits they put out and the albums they put out and like kind of how rele relevant they've been in different times in their careers they both went through ups and downs of relevancy but they both have to me have always been like two of the staples of their generation of r&b and like i said they're still relevant to this day so i was, I was really hyped for this battle and um uh so yeah even though i feel like they've always been very evenly matched numbers wise um for me y'all know brandy's like i'm brandy's my everything i'm a brandy stand to the day i die so i'm I, I was trying to be as non-biased as i can as i could be during the battle but y'all know brandy's my girl that is one of my favorite artists of all time i love monica to death i love monica um i'm not one of those stupid people well i'm stupid but i'm not one of those people that like feels like because I love Brandy, I can't love Monica or vice versa. Like, I love Monica so much, too. I love her music. But Brandy's one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, for me, even though I feel like they both have been very evenly matched in terms of what they've been able to achieve in music, for me, Brandy's always been um, my everything to me because I just feel like this is something about her voice and her music that just does something for my ears and for my spirit that I just can't describe. Like, I don't know. Brandy, to me, is just on a different level with her musicality. Um, but Monica... I think if anything has been maybe a little bit more consistent than Brandy and like kind of delivering like more consistent R&B hits maybe a little bit but I'm not gonna see more Brandy though because Brandy has put out a lot of hits too but I think a lot of people's argument with, with having Monica winning in this battle was the fact that Monica might have more consistent hits and maybe that's kind of true but also Brandy I think is right there with her when it comes to the hits that she's put out and to me Brandy 
just has, I don't know, Brady just has always had the better ear for more interesting, layered, complex, abstract, really like really well thought out, beautifully produced and arranged and sung music. Um, but I love Monica to death too, so that's my thing. Um, if you're if you're a child, it's one thing if you have a, a battle between both of these ladies, but if you've grown like me, there's no reason why you feel, I, I, I feel like there's no reason why you should feel the need to, to you know, to dog out one artist if you love the other. Like, I love Brandy, that's my girl, but I also love Monica too. And I feel like if you're grown, there's no reason why you, you can't appreciate both ladies. If you don't like one artist for actual reasons, then that's fine. But if you don't like one artist because you want to support the other one, then that's, to me that's stupid and that's childish as hell. So I'm glad that this versus battle kind of touched on that. And I like how they both mentioned that the the versus battle was going to be a good a good um, event, and it was it was definitely a good night for people like me who appreciate who appreciates both ladies. You know, the versus battle was was not for people who liked one or the other because you weren't really going to get the full impact of that. I feel like the versus battle was to highlight the fact that they both are amazing artists in their own right, and it was really good for people like me who appreciate both ladies. Every round, I was talking to each song. I wasn't trying to just support one artist because you know I wanted to be petty. I like I was like in both both songs in each round. Like that's how I operate. Um, so you know, the versus battle was definitely for, for people like me who are grown and mature and who ain't petty and who appreciate both artists what they've given to R and B. All right, so I'm about to get into the battle a little bit. Let me just talk about a few more things. I also wanted to say, um, I, I thought the energy in the beginning was a little bit off. I feel like they both just came in, you know, like, yo, what's up, girl? Whatever, yeah, we, we about to do this. And then, like, it, I felt like they kind of just talked a little bit, had a little bit of introduction, and then they kind of got straight to business. But I wish they kind of took more time at the beginning to kind of, like, you know, just be more chill, kind of talk about, you know, their careers and what this moment meant and all that. Um, and they kind of did for a little bit, but I wish they talked about it, like, more in depth and instead of just going, like, straight to business. Like, I wish they kind of, like, I wish they, like, hyped up the moment more because it really was a historic moment. So I wish they kind of took more time to, like, hype up the moment that it was. And I wish they just really talked about, like, um... I don't know, just more stuff and kind of made it more grand before they started playing the music. But it's all good though. And I thought it was hilarious how when um, they wanted to start, Monica was like, okay, Brandon, you go first, do your thing. And Brandon was like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, uh, what do I do? Oh, I, I gotta go my journal. I was like, Brandy, <laughs> I love my fan. That's why I love her. But I'm like, Brandy, you do too much. Like, relax. Like, you could tell Brooke that Brandy was just like, she was like in her head about it a little bit too much. But you know she's an Aquarius. That's my favorite. That, that, you know that's how Aquarius is be sometimes. They they might overthink a little bit too. You know you might be in, you know you know. But I still thought it was hilarious how Brandon was like a little bit like frazzled or nervous. But that's that's usual Brandon. Like Brandon's always like that. She's very bubbly and like always like very giddy and like you know, kind of you know. But that's that's how she's always been. So I lo I love my fave and I love how they started off with you know giving a shout out to Chadwick Boseman and also having Kamala ha uh, Kamala Harris making an appearance. I don't know if that was like thought. I don't know if they knew it was gonna happen. If that was a surprise, I'm not sure. But that was a cool moment. And I was like, damn, Kamala, you ain't playing. You really trying to get these votes out here? I, I ain't mad at you, Kamala. So we are gonna make this political for a little, for a little quick second. You know, Brandy, Mike, I love both y'all. I'm, I'm gonna be rocking all night. Yeah, but you know, make sure y'all know that we need to go out and vote. And I was like, all right, Kamala, do your thing. I imagine you jacking this versus for some promo. I ain't mad at you. Do your thing. <laughs> But it was cool to see Kamala giving some love. And then it started off. And the last thing I wanted to say before I get into each round is I think, I feel like Monica's, Monica's DJ was playing her songs like a little bit too short. I don't know if that was just me, but I feel like Brandy's DJ was playing her songs like at a good length. But I feel like Monica was like, Monica's DJ was playing her songs and then it would get really good and then like he would just cut it off. I'm like, yo, like play her shit out a little bit long, you know what I'm saying? But that's just something I know. Let, let me know if y'all thought that same thing too. But yeah, man, uh, last thing I'll say before I get into the rounds is I'm really glad that they also mentioned how uh, this moment was really important for Especially right now in this time in our society where we're just all going through a bunch of a uh, bunch of nonsense and everyone's really in a dark space right now. I really feel like the Brandy Monica battle was such a good like space of like light for us and it was really good to see that type of unity that I feel like we all need to see right now. I mean, we all know the drama that has happened between Brandy Monica over the years with the boy's mind and everything that's happened after that, but at the end of the day, I think what this battle really showed us is that a lot of the drama that really happened with Brandy Monica really wasn't even them particularly. I think it was more so just the fans and the people around them that kind of fueled whatever was there. Because as Brandy and Monica both talked about late in the battle, they both loved each other from the time they both got on the scene. Like Brandy appreciated Monica's vibe and Monica liked what Brandy was doing in music. They both liked what each other was doing in music and they both wanted to be cool. And they're obviously two, two different people, as we all know. Brandy's a very different person from Monica. Monica, you know, she, she's a hood, you know, she's a hood soldier. Brandy's always been more of like, you know, the giddy, you know, kind of good girl, you know, clean image type of thing. Like, they are very two different people, and they'll never ever be on the same page in terms of, in terms of how they operate as people, and that's fine. Um, but at least I'm glad that they acknowledge that, like, 
you know, there's nothing wrong with supporting someone who's in a similar lane to you, who, even though they're different from you. And that's important to realize in life. Someone can be in your same lane and they might be very different from you. They might do they might do things different from you. They might be a very different person from you, but that doesn't mean you can't love and support who they are. So this this versus battle was so necessary for the world right now in terms of seeing two people who have, who at least, at least in the in the media have have always been at odds really come together and and come you know come on some unified vibe and really come together to show that um even in these darkest times like they can come together and squash all the stuff they've had in their past and come together for this moment and i think it's a good model for all of us to follow so that's just the last thing i wanted to say about this versus battle now let's get into the round all right y'all so let's get into the rounds now so i'm looking at my computer for each round here i'm also looking at my phone for the notes uh so don't mind my eyes going everywhere but i'm tuned into y'all and can y'all can stop with the fact that like they did not have both of them did have one, not one sip of the swag that's behind them that's why they couldn't loosen up because they both did have none of that liquor behind them <laughs> all right but so starting with round one they both started off hard with round one y'all uh brandy started off first you played what about us michael played everything to me such a good round two of my favorite songs by them uh this round they weren't playing they started off off rip they were already starting off hard like um this is such a hard round for me uh but i went with a tie for this one because even though i love what about us so much everything to me is one of monica's best songs that vocal is crazy it's such a classic r&b song um but what about us the beat on that joint is crazy i love that record i love the way it was such a futuristic weird record um such an interesting line i couldn't pick between both songs i don't i definitely have played what about us more in my life but everything to me is a great song so this is a tie for me let me know what y'all think round two brandy played he is classic joint and monica played a dozen roses you remind me another cool song that i love off of her still um making of me album uh this round definitely went to brandy for me a dozen roses is a great track cool song shout out to missy on the production but he is to me shout out to warren cam on on on, and that, on that production listen he is is such a beautiful song that I don't know, just like it just can't touch your soul. The way Brandy sang that, that's one of her best vocal showcases. Um, it's like it has a gospel feel to it, but it's a really like nice romantic ballad. Um, that is a beautiful song off the full moon album that I have played so many times in my life. I just love that song. The way it's sung, the way it's arranged, it beautifully produced. It's a beautiful record, like a classic timeless record, one of her best vocal showcases. So for me, that round went to Brandy easily. Let me know what y'all thought. So after round two, I feel like they kind of got a little bit into the underlying tension that they've had throughout their career. I'm glad that they touched on it a little bit, but I kind of wish they went deeper into how the tension that came from the boys might really affected both of uh, the stretches of both of their careers uh, up until this point. I really wish they dived into it for the fans who have been really petty and messy about it. And I really, I, don't, I didn't need them to like un uncover every detail about it, but I really wish they went more into like what really like transpired between them how it kind of progressed as they got older and how the fans contributed to it how the people around them contributed to it and how it brought them to where they're at now i really but to me that maybe showed me that they're not maybe complete over it um and that's okay because you know a lot of people can relate to having lifelong issues with people but i kind of wish they just did it i feel like it was the perfect venue and the perfect moment for them to really go in detail and really go in depth as to like all the drama that has surrounded them throughout both of their careers with each other. I really wish, yeah, I feel like it would have been the perfect, like, cathartic moment to, like, really, like, kind of get it out there, just kind of air it out, and, like, you know, really, like, kind of talk about it real quick while everyone was kind of watching y'all. I feel like it would have been the perfect moment, but they touched on it a little bit, but not as much as I, I was hoping that they would, but it's okay. At least I'm glad that they actually, you know, showed up for the battle in the first place, so that was a win in itself. Um, but then for round three, uh, we went uh, with Brandy playing Full Moon and Monica played So Gone. This is like round one. This is another hard round for me too. Just like round one, two of my favorite songs by them. Uh, Full Moon is definitely my favorite Brandy. De definitely like top five Brandy songs. So Gone, definitely like probably top three Monica songs. I love both of these records so much. So this is another tie for me. Kind of like round one again. I have played Full Moon way more than I played So Gone in my life. But So Gone is a great record, so I couldn't really give it to Brandy completely. I love both. I love both of these songs. Full Moon to me is like everything. That production, the way she sung it, the melody, that track is everything. Um, it's such a groove. But So Gone is a classic R&B song. Like we all know the record, but it's, a, it's a, such a good song. It's a banger. Um, so for me, this round was a tie. But if you want with either one of these artists, I won't be mad at you at all. And also, I thought it was interesting how Brandy pulled out like all her full moon singles to start off right, like off rip. I thought it was a really interesting choice. I wasn't mad at it. And um, so after Monica played So Gone, Monica was talking about how like, you know, back in the day, she used to, you know, slam down doors and smack your chick and all that stuff, you know? <laughs> 
shout out to her person um so gone but that's just all about how like you know how she's like renewed now she's a different woman now she don't be on that same type of vibe no more and brandon was like yeah i know i know you used to smack chicks i know i used to do that i know how you used to do that because i experienced it and i was like oh brandon was like ready no no it's like don't don't bring that up right now like don't talk about that uh for the real friends we all we knew how that happened back in i think it was 98 or 99 when I think they were both about to perform at the AMAs or the VMAs, one of those shows, and Monica, like, apparently, allegedly, like, punched my, a punch brain in the face. I don't know what it was about, but that's what I heard from, you know, from back in the day. But I, I didn't really want them to get into that because that's old news and they were kids at that time. But Brandy brought it. I feel like Brandy was trying to, like, make a joke, but it just didn't land and it was awkward as hell. So I was like, Brandy, like, my, like, babe, like, <laughs> I was like, babe, like, no, don't do that. <laughs> and Monica was just like, so we really gonna talk about this right now? <laughs> that shit was awkward as hell, but I'm glad they moved on from that moment. That was awkward as hell. <laughs> All right, don't want to round four, which is the round of the debut singles. A really nice round. Brandy played I Wanna Be Down, and Monica played Don't Take It Personal. Just one of them days. Really cool round. I like how Brandy set up I Wanna Be Down with a, a story about Pac, and then she played a little sample of Tupac talking about Brandy and I Wanna Be Down. I forgot what Tupac's song it was, but Brandon was talking about how she met Tupac and was just corny as hell when she first met him. I thought it was a really funny story. And I also loved how when Monica, was, after Monica played Don't Take It Personal, Brandon was talking about how much after she heard that song, she really wanted to know who that artist was and she really wanted to work with that artist because she just thought her vibe was dope. And I, I really felt it was genuine. So I really loved seeing Brandon talk about how much, like, you know, she after she heard Don't Take It Personal, she was like, yo, I really love this girl's confidence. I love her swag. I love her energy. I love her vibe. Like, I really want to get to know her and know who she is. I want to work with her. And then they finally did work with each other on the Boys so I thought it was a really cool story show that to show that even from the jump there was always love you know so I love that they had that moment and you could tell it was genuine between them um, so this round was a really cool round I love both of these songs they're both classic debut singles from from you know from R&B artists and um, even though I do love don't take it personal I gave this round to Brandy because to me I want to be down it's just like a classic song that I feel like whenever it comes on everybody knows everybody's rocking that melody the the groovy beat it's just a really classic song to me I love it when take it personal I love that song but I want to be down and takes the edge for me in this round round five was the round of the second singles off their debut albums uh Brandy played baby and Monica played like this and like that uh I love both of these records so much this is another hard round for me I love both of these I love both of these songs um but I gave the extra Brandy for baby uh listen even though like like this and like that is a complete banger um, Baby to me is such a classic song. It's such a classic R&B song from the 90s. I love the arrangement of that song. Baby, 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 baby. Like, the, and the way Brandon was singing on that track, Brandon was singing on Baby, like some like grown woman singing. To push it towards the end, yeah, like, I love Baby. I played that song out so many times in my life. I love that song. Um, so to me, Brandon got the edge of this round again. Uh, but I love Like This and Like That. If it had been a weaker song, I probably would've picked Like This and Like That, but I love Baby so much. Strong record, so I give it some to Brandy. Um, but I also thought it was really cute how um, Brandy was talking about how like in this round she's talking about how God let her down with her falsetto <laughs> And Monica was like Brandy you tripping like your falsetto is dope And I was like yeah Brandy, Brandy always, I feel like Brandy's always like She's always like trying to like downplay her own abilities and downplay her talent And that's, that's one thing like I've always like wanted Brandy to change Is like just have more confidence as to like her talent what she gives to the world Cause Brandy knows she's dope but I feel like she likes to downplay her dopeness to like to appease people or to like seem or to like to seem humble. But it's like nah, Brandy, like you're lit and you know you're lit, so just, just like walk in it and like live in it. You know what I'm saying? Round six, we have Brandy play Angel in Disguise and Monica play You Should Have Known Better. Another great round of good songs. Um, I love You Should Have Known Better. Cool song, cool song by Monica. Great song. But to me, uh, Brandy took this round easily because Angel in Disguise to me is like one of her best songs. That song is magic. The way she sung it, the production by, by Dark Child, the arrangement. That song is so atmospheric and it's a complete vibe. And it just like, I feel like that song takes you somewhere every time you hear it from the way she sung it. It's definitely one of her like her best like vocal records. Like, I don't know, Brandy was just in her bag with Angel of Sky. So to me, Angel of Sky took this round easily. Um, even though I love You Should Have Known Better. So for me, Brandy took this round. Let me know what y'all 
All right, so round seven was the round of the soundtrack singles from both of them. Um, Brandy played a Missing You off of the Set It Off soundtrack, and Monica played For You I Will off the Space Jam soundtrack. And before Brandy started, I thought it was really cool how she had, well, at first her poems were cool. I kind of got, I was kind of over her poems towards the end. I feel like Brandy put out way too many poems, but the, when she first pulled it out, it was cool. Um, she put out a little poem to kind of, you know, talk about our fallen heroes and kind of salute all of our, you know, our artists and celebrities who we love, who, who we've lost over the past couple of years. It's been a, the last couple of years have been a, there's been a lot of crazy death. So Brandy kind of took the moment to kind of, you know, you know, you know, pay homage to a lot of the artists we love who, who we've lost recently. So that was a really nice moment with her poem. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then they both played each song. Uh, Missing You is a cool song. I never really had gone off of that song that much, even though it's a, you know it's a cool song. Uh, but for me, I give this round to Monica because For You I Will to me is a way better song than Missing You. It just it just feels better to me. I love the melody of that song. I love it. it feels more classic to me, and I feel like it's aged better than Missing You. Uh, Missing You is not a bad song at all, but for me, I prefer For You I Will. So I give this round to Monica. All right, round eight, we had Brandy play Almost Doesn't Count and Monica play Why I Love You So Much. Good round of good classic songs. Uh, this is a hard round. This is another really difficult round for me. Um, I honestly would be okay with anybody going either way because both of these songs are classic songs. But I gave the edge to Brandy in this round. Why I Love You So Much is a good song. Baby, that's just why I love you so much. That's a classic song. But almost doesn't count to me. Just has the edge because I don't know. I just I have more of more of a connection to that song. Um, I know like the lyrics better. I just I just have more connection to almost doesn't doesn't count. And I feel like both of these are beautifully written R&B songs. But to me, almost doesn't count. It's just a little bit more timeless and just a little bit more resonant to me. So I gave it as to Brandy. Uh, but if you give it on to Monica. I won't be mad at you at all. All right, now on to round nine. For round nine, uh, Brandy played Broken Hearted, and then Monica played Love All Over Me. Cool round. Um, I've never been the biggest fan of Broken Hearted. I like that song. I don't dislike it, but I feel like that's like one. I feel like Broken Hearted is like, like a lot of Brandy fans is like favorite song. And I don't. Maybe it's because I didn't really grow up, and I grew up more than more than the 2000s than the 90s. Um, but I feel like if you're a 70s or 80s baby, maybe you have way more of a connection to Broken Heart, which I, I understand. Um, but for me, Broken Heart has never been my favorite Brandy song. It's a good song, but it's not, I've never really gone up for it like that. Um, but Love All Over Me is a song I actually haven't heard in a long time, but I love that song. I forgot about that song off the Still Standing album by Monica. So I gave this round to Monica because for me, Love All Over Me is just a, it's just a better song to me. I enjoy that song more. I love the vocals on that song. Um, I feel like Monica was singing on that song. Now I got love, I love me. Like she was singing on that song, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so I feel like a lot of people probably pick Broken Heart this round, but I pick Monica's Love All Of Me for this round. Uh, but if you want it the other way, wouldn't be mad at you at all, let me know what y'all think. And I also thought it was really cool how Monica was like getting jiggy as hell to Broken Hearted, because apparently uh, Broken Heart is one of Monica's favorite Brandy songs. So I'm like, I don't every, I don't know, Broken Heart is like one of everybody's like favorite Brandy songs. I don't know why. Like to me that song is cool, but it ain't like you know, it ain't it ain't like that, but you know, Monica loves Broken Hearted, so she was getting jiggy as hell to the song, which I thought was so cute to see. Uh, but for me, Monica took this round, but let me know what y'all think. All right, so after round nine, they had a little intermission where they both took a little break. Um, I thought it was really funny how during the intermission, they were playing like a bunch of hard-ass rap songs during this whole like R&B battle, which I thought was so funny in itself. Um, but yeah, uh, Monica took the time to premiere her new song, Trenches with Lil Baby. Um, I don't like Trenches at all. I like that she played it during the battle, you know, smart play. And I also thought it was a really smart play to have Lil Baby in the song. I love that. And I was really looking forward to, you know, Monica's song with the Neptunes, because the Neptunes produced the track. I've, I've been looking forward to, Monica, to the Monica and the Neptunes collaboration, and it came in the form of this new song, Trenches, but I don't really like Trenches like that. Maybe I need to hear it more, but I'm not really feeling like that. Uh, but let me know what you about Trenches. I don't like it, uh, but I'm so hyped itself for Monica's album, whenever it's gonna drop. Whenever Monica's dropping her album, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm really excited for it, but I don't like Trenches like that. But let me know what you think about Trenches. All right, now we're on to round 10, which is a really interesting round. Uh, Monica played Anything to Find You, and then Brandy played Top of the World. I thought it was really funny round because I think Monica, uh, Monica started playing her songs first and Monica started, she, she set off this round by um, interpolating C Murder's Down For My Niggas. <laughs> Shout out to C Murder, free C Murder. Um, but I liked how they use, uh, Monica used this time to kind of talk about, you know, her, her relationship with C Murder and how like she's trying to get him out of prison. I like how they brought attention to prison reform uh, with the whole move movement that they have to get C Murder out of prison because, um, you know, he's innocent. But 
I thought it was funny to tell how she was just getting down and see she's like, about the mother nigga, cause I'm down. She's like, free my baby, see if I heard her. I was like, Monica, chill. <laughs> but I thought it was funny as hell. I'm like, you better rock for your, you better rock for your man, Monica. <laughs> rock, rock for your, rock for your, your boo thing. You know what I'm saying? We all know, we all know the story between her, her and C Murder. Uh, but shout out to C Murder, that was funny as hell. And then so Monica put her song first, and I was so mad at Brandy. I'm like, Brandy, how do you not know this song? Brandy was like, Is this a new record? And I was like, Brandy, this song came out like eight years ago, and I love this song. Like, what's <laughs> I'm like, Brandy, this song came out in 2011. Yeah, I need Envy to find you is definitely one of my favorite Monica songs. And I'm mad as hell that y'all slept on the song when it first came out. I feel like that song deserved way more when it first came out. Y'all slept on it, uh, especially with, with it being produced by Missy. Like, that was a great song. Y'all slept on it. Y'all let it go. But I love that song. Um, but come on y'all, Top of the World by Brandy, classic joint, that song is so classic. Um, so I gave this round to Brandy, even though I love Anything to Find You, this is a really difficult round, I love both of these songs, uh, but I gave the S to Brandy this round. Um, but yeah man, uh, really cool round, but to me, the Brandy took this round, but Anything to Find You is a great record that y'all need to go back and revisit if y'all don't know that song, great record. And I think before they went into round 11, they gave some love to LaShawn Daniels, rest in peace LaShawn Daniels, he was such a kind spirited heartwarming loving funny man that to me was such was such a staple in r&b when he was here so rest in peace lashawn davis i'm glad brandy mentioned him um rest in peace lashawn you you'll you'll be forever missed man you'll be forever missed all right so then they went on to round 11 which is a really interesting round i think brandy pulled out another poem and i was over it like we probably all were but it was you know it's whatever <laughs> Uh, Monica played Still Standing, uh, which to me was a surprise. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised she pulled that one out because it wasn't really a single, and I don't really consider it a deep cut. Um, but it's a good it's a song that I love. Shout out to Lou Chris on that song too. Luda, Luda killed his verse, um, and then Brandy pulled out Borderline off of the B7 album, which I'm glad she pulled out because I feel like Borderline is definitely a gem, and it's also her current single off of B7 as well. So I'm glad she gets some love to you know a current single off of her album, and it also it also has a great video too. Shout out to the Borderline video, great video. Um, but yeah, man, um, I gave this round to Brandy because to me, uh, even though I love Still Standing, I feel like Still Standing also fit the narrative of, of what they were talking about. With Monica talking about how, like, you know, she, all the stuff she's been through while she's still here, she's still standing. So the song, you know, fit the narrative of, of, of what they were talking about during the battle. Um, but for me, Brandy took this round because Borderline, to me, um, I don't know, I just feel like the vocals in that song go stupid. They go stupid. The vocals are crazy. I love the, the way that track feels. It just, it just you know, just wraps you up and takes you in. Um, it's such a vibe, and I love, I just love the way Brandy sung and performed that song. It's such a good song. Such a calm, but really powerful song at the same time. I um, hope it gets some Grammy love. I would love that. Um, but yeah, man, so I picked, I picked Borderline for this one. Um, to me, it's a gem off of B7. I'm glad she gave love to like a new song. Um, yeah, but either way, both of these songs were cool, but let me know what y'all thought about this one. So I love how round 11 going to round 12 was like both of them pulling out like their latest like gems and singles from the catalog, and they both pulled out the perfect songs. Uh, so for round 12, Monica pulls out Commitment, which is a song that came out last year. Great record. Uh, that's supposed to be off of our new album whenever it comes out. And Brandy pulls out Love Again. Her track with Daniel Caesar off of both of their latest albums. Um, I love both of these songs so much. This was another really hard round. Uh, so for me, this one was a tie. I wanted to give it to Love Again at first for Brandy, but Commitment is such a good song that I just feel like I don't listen to it as much, but I know like every lyric, run, harmony of that song. I love that song. It's such a good song. So I gave this round to uh, both of them. Um, and Love Again is such a good song too. That song is amazing, it's a gem. Beautiful vocal performance from both Brandy and Daniel Caesar. A uh, beautifully written song, beautifully performed. Such a gem for both of them. Um, so, this round was hard for me, but I, I made it a tie because I couldn't pick one or the other. They're both great songs. Uh, but let me, let me know what y'all thought about this round. Okay, so now we have round 13 to me, which is probably one of the most boring rounds in the whole versus battle, but you know, it was cool. Round 13, Monica played Slow Jam, her track with Usher, and Brandy played Put It Down. Um, I picked Brandy for this round. A lot of people probably would have picked Monica, which is I'm cool with that. But I have more of a, more of a connection to put it down. I'm, I'm, I don't really love Slow Jam that much, but you know it's a cool song. Uh, but for me, I, I gave this round to Brandy and Chris Brown. This is like the this is like the round of them picking like uh, their collaborations with like you know uh, R&B kings, you know Chris Brown and Usher. So this is cool. But I gave this round to Brandy for put it down. Uh, let me let me know what y'all thought about this one. All right, round 14, we have Monica play the first night and Brandy play who is she to you? Uh, both cool songs. I know a lot of people love the first night, and understandably so. It's a really good song. I like the message of that song. Uh, shout out to Jermaine Dupri in that production. Uh, but for me, I give this I give this round to Brandy because I love who is she to you. I love that song so much. I love the whole Aphrodite album and. 
the vibes that her that Brandon Timberland created on that album, I love it. Um, Who she do to me is such, is such a better song. I just enjoy this song more. Uh, but the first night is a cool song too, cool song. Uh, but I have more more of a connection to Who She Do You. I love that song more. So I gave this song to Brandy. Uh, but let me know what y'all thought about this round. All right, for round 15, we have Monica play Knock Knock. Don't come knocking at my door. <laughs> and Brandy play Best Friend. Listen, for I actually one of my best friends, Doctor knows this. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but one of my best friends does know this. Best friend by Brandy is one of my favorite Brandy songs. So this round went to Brandy instantly. Um I Knock Knock is a cool song, cool song. But Best Friend to me is one of her best songs. I love Best Friend. The beat on that song is crazy. I love the message of you know empowering friendships, even though that song is about Ray J. <laughs> but whatever. Um, and vocally, she went stupid on that song. I love Best Friend, one of my favorite Brandy songs. Definitely top five Brandy songs. I love that record. Um, it just it just means a lot to me in my life. I just love the, I just my, it's one of my favorite songs. Like, every time I hear that song, I could be in the worst mood. If I hear Best Friend, I'm like, I, I'm rocking. Like, you know, so that, that's what that song does for me. So I gave this song to Brandy for Best Friend. Let me know what y'all thought. All right, so round 16, uh, this is the round of, you know, uh, two of their biggest singles that came out in 95. Uh, Monica played Before You Walk Out of My Life and Brandy played Sit Up In My Room from the Waiting To Exhale soundtrack. Both these songs are great songs. This is another hard round. This is a hard round. Um, really hard round. I wanted to give it to both of them, but I couldn't. So I thought about it and even though I wanted to make it a tie, I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Before You Walk Out of My Life is a classic R&B song that Monica has under her belt. Y'all remember her on the roof with that brown outfit and the white shoes. Y'all remember that? You know, so you know, I, a whole like what, 13, 14, 15 years old, acting like she was a woman in her 30s and 40s, you know, stressing over a man in her life. <laughs> like, Monica was way too grown when she was a kid. Like, <laughs> but y'all remember that? Y'all remember that song in that video? Classic, classic R&B shit. But Sit Up In My Room by Brandy, that song to me has just aged better for me and it means more in my life. Uh, I play that song way more in my life. I just love that beat by Babyface. Babyface killed that beat. Boom, da, 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 boom, da. Come on, that's classic shit, man. And I just, I don't know, I just feel like Sit Up In My Room is just, uh, it's just, it's just more fun, like a beat, like a, I don't know, it just feels good to me. But Before You Walk Out My Life is a great song too. So this is a hard round. If you, if you want Monica, I won't be mad at you at all. But for me personally, I wouldn't bring me on this round. Uh, let me know what y'all thought. And also, real quick, I thought it was hilarious how Monica was like, I was invited to the Way to SL soundtrack. And Brady was like, like, Monica wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Monica wasn't, it wasn't Brady's fault. You know, you should be bad at Babyface. But Monica was, Monica was tight as hell. She was like, you know, everybody in my mom's on the way to the soundtrack and I wasn't on it. And I was like, Monica, you just came out day to day. Like, Brandy had been on since 94, but like, Monica just came out that year. So it's like, you know, Monica, you really were brand new. Um, yeah, but Monica was tight. <laughs> but the funny thing is, I don't blame her because I really feel like, honestly, Monica, especially with her being as grown as she was, even when she was a kid, Monica actually would have fit right in on the Waiting to Excel soundtrack. She would have fit right in on that soundtrack. If Babyface gave her the right track, she would have fit right in on that soundtrack. But, you know, she had just come out, so I'm not surprised they didn't put her on it. But, yeah, Monica was tight, y'all. <laughs> So after that awkward moment, uh, Brandy wants to line up the mood a little bit and kind of bring up the vibes. So she decided to sing A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke, which is one of her, her favorite songs to sing. If you know Brandy, you know that's one of her favorite songs to sing. Um, that is a great song. I was born by the river. <laughs> great song, y'all. So Brandy started singing it. She got into her vibe, was killing it. And I thought it was great how she sung that for the moment to kind of talk about how, like, you know, we all need change in our society right now. So I thought it was a great moment, but it also became a little bit awkward because like she was trying to get Monica to sing with her. Monica was just like, nah, this is just your bad. You get, you got it. And my, I felt her. I'm like, Monica, I, I I wasn't mad at Monica. I'm like, Monica, Monica could have joined in and sang along, but I was like, you know what? Like Monica didn't want to sing. She just wanted to let like, Brandy have her a moment singing that song. So I was like, I get it. Uh, you know, I love my favorite, but she be doing a little bit, little bit too much sometimes. Like Brandy, that was your moment, and you were trying to bring Monica in it. And I, I understood the intention behind it, but it's like, you know what? Just sing your song. And Monica was just sitting there rocking vibe. Like, you know, Monica be in her own zone. Like, she be in her own vibe. She didn't really try to be out there like that. So, like, Monica was just chilling. Um, but Brandy made it awkward. So, I'd be like, Monica, you don't want to sing with me? I'm like, Brandy, let it go. It wasn't even that, it wasn't even that deep. But Brandy was trying to make this like a whole, like, you know, kiki thing. I'm like, man, Brandy, let it go. But that was an awkward moment. But I still loved Brandy singing that song because it's a beautiful song. And we all need that type of vibe in our life right now. We all need faith and hope and belief that a change is going to come soon. So that was a great moment. I appreciated it. Uh, shout out to Brandy. And then we went to round 17. A really interesting round. Um, we had Monica play every time the beat drop. 
which is a song that I know y'all a lot. I feel like a lot of Malcolm fans don't like that song, but I still love that song to this day. That song takes you back to my middle school days instantly. I love that record. Uh, that come on, during the pre produce the hell out that beat. Bom, 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 bom. Come on, yeah, that's a good song. I love that song. I feel like a lot of people don't like the song, but I liked it. I feel like a lot of people thought it like Monica wasn't being like herself in the song, but I feel like that was Monica getting into her, her hood bag. Like, I thought, you know, it wasn't her most authentic song, but it was a fun song, so I appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? And that song still goes hard to this day. Um, and then Brandy played Talk About Our Love off the Aphrodisiac album. Really good round. I love both of these songs. I gave the edge to Brandy because every time the every time the beat drop is a cool song. But talk about I love has aged so well. It's a beautifully um, produced song. Shout out to Kanye West. Beautifully sung song. I just love the way Brandy performed that song, and especially with, with, with what it's talking about too, which a lot of people, especially in this social media era, is more relevant than ever of letting people get in your business and kind of you know really like affect and like. You know run your relationship from the outside like that's more relevant than ever these days so um talk about love is a great song um it was a single off after dj i didn't do that well but i still love that song to this day and to me it's definitely um it's a song that's just aged better but i love every time the beat drop that's a great song too but i gave this song to brandy all right round 18 we had monica pull out sideline ho 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 sideline ho <laughs> and brandy pulls out put that on everything Really funny round. I'm really surprised. Actually, I'm not that surprised Monica pulled out Sideline Ho because this this is a fan favorite, so I'm not surprised she pulled it out. This is a deep cut. I love Sideline Ho. Um, I know all the hood chicks went up for this round. I know all the hood chicks went up for this round. They all love this song when it came on. <laughs> Sideline Ho is a hood chick anthem. Uh, but for me, I gave this round to Brandy um, because put that in everything to me is like one of the most magical, like beautifully sung, beautifully produced RB songs of all time. Put that in everything is a freaking deep cut. That is a gem in, in Brandy's catalog. I love that song. Such a beautiful song. Um, I know every note, harmony, run, vote. I know everything about that song. I love that song to the, to the death of me. So, Sideline Ho is a great song. I love that song. In the week around, I probably would have given it to Monica, but I love Put Down Everything. That is a great song. So I give this one to Brandy. Oh yeah, also real quick. Brandy, I love you, but again, you're doing too much. Talk about how we can't say ho because you know her daughter's for I was watching. I'm like, yo, Brandy, your daughter's like 19, 20 years old. Like, she be alright. Like, and also like, Brandy, this is 2020. Don't nobody care about you saying ho. Like, this ain't 2000. If this is 2000, I'll be like, alright. But this is 2020, Brandy. It's a different day and age. I'm like, mama, like it's cool. Like, it's cool. We we can do that. It's cool. <laughs> like, Brandy was doing way too much. <laughs> Like, no, the, she said the, the millennials are watch. I'm like, Brandy, the millennials, if anything, they've been cussing since, since they've been 10. Like, you, they good. Like, you good. <laughs> Brandy still think it's like 1998 and like, you know, the kids can't hear her cussing. Like, Brandy, it's cool, wow. It's cool. <laughs> All right, so round 18 going into round 19. This is like the rounds of like the deep cuts and the fan favorites. I loved it. Uh, so for round 19, we have Monica play her duet with Keisha Cole, Trust. I love that song. That song is magic. And then uh, Brandy play When You Touch Me. Another one of my favorite songs by her off that Full Moon album. One of her best vocal performances on record. Ah, oh, this is a hard round, a really difficult round. This is to me, this is like the this is like the last like really hard round. Um, this is another tie for me. I couldn't pick one or the other. On a better day, I probably would have given Brandy the edge because I have more of a connection to When You Touch Me. But Trust also is a song that I played so much in my life too. I love that song. The way her and Keisha were harmonizing and singing to the raptors on that track, they were singing on that track. You know what I'm saying? But Brandy was also singing on When You Touch Me. She was singing too. Like this is this is like the round of like the vocal songs, like where they were both singing their asses off. Like I love this round. Both really great songs. I couldn't pick one or the other. On, on a different day, I might pick one or the other. So, for me, this round was a tie. Uh, but let me just y'all think about uh, the round 19. Really good round. I love both of these songs, man. Both of these are classic. Um, like, to, be, to me, these are two of like, the most like well-sung, magical, like um, just well-made RB songs of their time, of, of, you know, in, in the 2000s. I love both of these songs. So, I couldn't pick one or the other. It was, it was a tie for me. Let me know what y'all thought. All right, so round 20, we have Monica play Just Right For Me. Um, the first single off of her Code Red album. I love that song. Shout out to Lil Wayne on that track, too. And Brittany played Have You Ever. I thought it was really weird around. I'm, I'm surprised Monica didn't save a stronger song for Have You Ever, but whatever. Um, but yeah, really cool round. I love both these songs, but obviously Brittany takes the edge. Even though I love Just Right For Me, um, Have You Ever is a classic R&B song, classic song for Brittany. I love that song. Um, 
so well written, such such a timeless, you know, smooth Rambi record uh, that still means a lot to this day. So Brandy took the extra me this round. And also, I had no idea that that was Brandy's dad on the background on Have You Ever. Shout out to Willie Norwood. I had no idea that was Brandy's dad on the backgrounds for the song. So shout out to Willie Norwood. Um, but when I listened to it, I'm like, oh yeah, that does sound like Brandy's dad. Like, so I didn't, I didn't realize that before. So shout out to the verse about for, you know, giving us new information that we never knew before. Uh, but yeah, man, Have You Ever took this round uh, from me. Let me know what y'all thought. So yeah, man, we're nearing the end of the battle and I'm seeing the numbers on IG and it's still at like over a million viewers. And I'm like, damn, like, I, I was just so shocked that they really were able to sustain like over a million viewers on IG Live like the whole time, even even through the break too. Like, I think that during the break, it did down to like 800,000, 900,000, something like that. But when it came right back, it was like right back up to like 1.1, 1.2 million. And I was like, damn, like, I really feel like, um, it, that is such a testament to both of their careers and not only to like their careers and what they've achieved in music but i think it's also a testament to really how how much like you know quality r b is really missed in the culture right now i think that's what it shows all these artists is that honestly even though everyone loves hip-hop and everyone wants to act like you know they don't care about r b at the end of the day we all miss like you know quality r b like we used to have back in the 90s and 2000s like we all miss that and I think that's what, you know, everyone tuning into the verse battle showed us. That they had a million viewers the whole time. Like, it shows that we really missed the type of vibes that Monica and Brandon gave us back in the day with the music. Then we really miss those quality R&B vibes and music right now. So, you know, I think that's what that showed. You know, it was, it was just a great moment. So, and then for the last round, it was two of their classic songs produced by Dark Child for the final round. Even though it was the 21st round, it was, I guess it was like a bonus round, even though it should have been the last round, but whatever. I think they lost tra track at some point of the count. But the last round was round 21. Uh, Monica played Angel of Mine, one of her best songs, and Brandy played The Boy Is Mine, which I thought was a really interesting choice. At the end of the day, it is Brandy's song, but I thought it was a weird choice to play it as her record because, you know, that is their duet. I feel like it's, I feel like The Boy Is Mine should have been the last track they both played as a bonus round to celebrate the versus battle. Not as, not as the song to compete, but really as a song to celebrate both of them being the battle as the last song. That's what they should have done as the last song. So I thought, I know it wasn't Brandy's intention, but I feel like when Brandy played as her song, I feel like she was low-key like Sunny Monica. Like, yeah, like you on it, but this is still my song. Like, you know, I don't I don't think she meant to do it like that, but I feel like that's like the message that Brandy sent. It was like, yeah, like I don't play it as my song, even though like you're on it too. Like, so it was weird, but whatever. Uh, to me, I couldn't pick Brandy or Monica because like I said, Monica was on the boys' mind. Uh, so for me, this round was a tie. Let me know what y'all thought. So yeah, man, with the boy is mine. Um, you know, Brandy played it, but Monica and Monica like was singing her parts, but like Loki looked like she didn't want to sing it, which I'm not. I'm not mad at because I feel like they both should play it as their song together, and not Brandy's song. But whatever. So yeah, Monica was, wasn't really here for it. You could tell that she was just like, ah, singing her parts, but she didn't really care. <laughs> but I thought it was obviously a good way to kind of end the battle off of both of them singing the boy is mine. Um, but yeah, man. So um, that was all my thoughts on the rounds. Let me know what y'all thought about these rounds. Uh, if you've been keeping my account, I know, listen, I'm a Brandy stan, so I tried to be as non-biased as I could. And the thing is, like, y'all gotta, gotta give me credit. I love Monica, too. I know all these Monica songs. Like, I love Monica. I love, I know all these Monica songs, and I have no beef with Monica. I love her, too. But by my account, if you can tell, my winner for the versus battle was... Brandy! <laughs> Obviously. I love Monica, but my winner was Brandy. I have Brandy by 14... Um, two for Monica and five ties. So, you know, if you want to consider ties, maybe it's like 14 um, to seven with Monica. Um, but yeah, man, I, I love Monica so much, but to me, Brandy just had the edge of so many rounds with just, with just her music. I just love, to me, Brandy's music is just like, it's just a little bit more elevated for me, but I love Monica too. Like, I love Monica's catalog. I love her music. So yeah, my winner was Brandy. Uh, but for those of you, for those of you who thought who you thought Monica won, uh, let me know which rounds y'all thought she took. Let me know why I thought she won the versus battle. I'm not mad at you, but don't let it be because you hate Brandy. Let it be because you really thought Monica had better music. That's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about you not liking the other artists. That's what I think. That's what it is for a lot of people, which is stupid to me. But it is what it is. So yeah, y'all, Brandy was my winner. But um, you know, and I'm a little bit biased because like she's my, you know, I'm, I'm a stand for her. But at the end of the day. I already knew she'd be my winner, but still, even though I knew that she'd be my winner, um, you know, Monica's songs still go off, and to me, Monica's place in R&B and in music has always been solidified, and will always be solidified. So, this is nothing against Monica. Like, I love Monica to the death of me too, and she will always be, she will always be solidified in music, hands down. Uh, now, let me to finish off. Let me just give out my thoughts on some songs I feel like they both um, could have played or should have played, 
and I know they're only 20 rounds, 21 for them, but um, these are songs that I feel like would have been nice for them to have pulled out, but I know they could have pulled out everything, but these are my thoughts on other songs they could have pulled out. Uh, starting with Brandy, um, off of her debut album, it would have been cool for it to have pulled out Always In My Mind, that's another deep cut that I love, um, that's a gem. Off of Nervous and Never, I feel like Brandy should have pulled out, or not should have, but she could have pulled out um, Happy. That is a gem that I feel like should have been a single back in the day. Happy is a good song. And also Nervous and Never, maybe. And also You Don't Know Me Like You Used To. Uh, that, was another, that was a single off of Nervous and Never. I feel like that could, she, could, she, she could have pulled that one out too. That was a good song. Um, off of Full Moon, I feel like she also could have pulled out um, I Thought. That is one of my favorite Brandy songs to this day. She, Brandy was singing on I Thought. Singing. But it wasn't a single, but that that's a deep cut right there. And also maybe Nothing off of the Fumon album. Nothing is a great, that's another good deep cut as well. Off of Aphrodisiac, she could have pulled out um, I Tried. That That's another deep cut that I love. I Tried or maybe Say You Will. That's a deep cut for me that I love to the death of me. That's a deep cut, I love that song. And um, off of yo, she, I just wish she didn't pull anything off of Human. Like Brandy really hates the Human album, which I don't understand because that wasn't a bad album. It wasn't like her best, but it wasn't a bad album. Uh, she didn't pull out uh, Right Here Departed, which I'm not surprised at. But you know, I thought like it was, that was a, it was kind of a successful single, so I'm surprised she didn't pull that one out. But yeah, she didn't pull out Right Here Departed. Maybe even um acapella say something. No, not not say something. Acapella something's missing. That's a that's another two cut as well. That's a gem. I love that song. Uh, oh, I forgot about Af Aphrodisiac album. Aphrodisiac. Why did Brandy not play Aphrodisiac? I feel like she should have played that. Like, why did she not play that song? Like, Brandy, you should play Aphrodisiac. That's come on. Like, I, I feel like Brandy doesn't like that song because of all the stuff with that video. But like, that's a good song. Yeah, Brandy should have played Aphrodisiac. Um, I think that's all. And maybe off of the Human album, uh, Long Distance. That wasn't a big single. So I, I wasn't mad about that one. But Long Distance is another she could have she could have pulled out. And then off of 211, uh, she, maybe, she maybe could have pulled out Wildest Dreams, you know? Um, but yeah, the only, the only song I feel like she should have pulled out that she didn't was going to be Aphrodisiac and maybe Right Here Departed to represent, to represent the human album, but that's really it. Um, but all those other songs, they're all deep cuts that I love that would have been nice for her to pull out, but you know, they only had 20 rounds, so it's all good. For Monica, I feel like Monica could have pulled out um, off of her debut album. I love the song Gay Down. I love that song. And I know it was never a single, but for me, I love that song. So that would have been, been a nice surprise, but I'm not surprised she didn't pull it out. Um, and I know everyone loves the song With You. I thought to me that song's okay. I know everyone loves that song, but to me that song's I. Right. So maybe that's another one that a lot of people would have appreciated. Um, she also could have pulled out Ain't Nobody. I, I don't love that song that much, but I know a lot of people love that song. I think that was a, I think that was a soundtrack single. I forgot what movie it was for. And, um... Off of the boys, my album, she could have pulled out Street Symphony. So that's a deep cut that a lot of people love. Street Symphony is definitely a deep cut that a lot of people love. Um, off of, she could have pulled out All Eyes on Me off of that album. That that was like you know a little banger for her. And then off of the After After the Storm album, actually I have nothing on that album that she could have pulled out. Yeah, she she covered that album pretty well. Um, off of the Making of Me album, I feel like she could have pulled out Gotta Move On. I love that's a deep cut that I love. I love that song. And maybe Hell No, Leave Home. That could have been a cool song to pull out too with Twister. Off of the um Still Standing album, I don't think I've I i do not think I have anything off that album that she could have pulled out. Um the New Life album, I feel like she could have she could have pulled out until it's gone, maybe. Um, but I'm I'm not surprised she didn't pull that one out. And also off the Cold Red album, I really wish she pulled out Alone in Your Heart. I love that song and i think it was gonna be a single but then was scrapped at the last minute for some reason i don't know why but that song's one of my favorite monica songs produced by pop and oak i love alone in your heart that song is everything so that would have been a cool tea cover to pull out but i'm not surprised she didn't pull it out so yeah man those are my thoughts all the songs that i feel like they could have pulled out you know if they had maybe like you know 10 20 more rounds uh but it's all good though the versus battle was still legendary it was a historic moment for r&b a historic moment for both of them and their careers so i loved it I'm sorry for both of these ladies for what they achieved with this versus battle and also for what they've achieved with their amazing, long, consistent, beautiful careers. And hope, you know, here's another, you know, 
10, 20 years for both of them. I love both of them. I'm so glad for what they achieved this battle. Shout out to both of these ladies. I love both of y'all. Thank you so much. And shout out to Brandy for being my winner. Uh, let me know who y'all winner was, okay? Appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. So that's my review on the versus battle between Brandy and Monica. Uh, let me know what y'all thought about the versus battle down below. Give me your thoughts on all the rounds. Uh, give me your thoughts on who y'all winner was. Give me your thoughts about you know what was going down during the battle. You know, give me your thoughts on all the you know the underlying tension that y'all thought y'all saw and you know any highlights that y'all thought about. Give me give me all your thoughts down below. Appreciate y'all. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, okay? All right, y'all, but this has been your boy, Bright, the RB Kid. Thank you for watching. But for now, I'm signing off, baby. Bye, y'all. Peace. Oh, I came to vibe. You came to function just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, 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 no. I came to vibe. You came to function just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no. Relax just a little bit. You don't gotta worry, you can just.